Okay, so that's the turbine housing fitted. Goes on quite easily. You've got to remember to make sure the plastic um, sort of draft excluder really uh, fits it, it onto the lip as you're putting it on. That this panel, which is part of this plate, comes round the outside. You've got to bend that slightly to get that into position. You can't put that screw in there yet because you've got another plate to go in there yet. Uh, once you've got it in, you can tighten those two down. That one there and that one there. And we're now going to put the little plate that goes for the dipstick in place. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're not fitting the thermostat and flaps. So... Consequently, uh, I'll just get the flaps. Hang on. Just wander across the workshop with me. Flaps. Where are the flaps? Don't even know. There they are. Here's the turbine we've got to fit fairly soon. Here's the whole winky wonky flap mechanism. And this winky wonky flap mechanism, right, just get back here, is supposed to fit inside here on operate like that. Hang on, take it from the front Operates like that. Now, the problem is that it's typical, very old fashioned sort of Volkswagen design with a spring and the thermostat that if you remember we threw out earlier because it was punctured and what can happen is um, well it just locks down it gets stiff and it locks down and you don't get the cooling especially over the oil cooler that you should do so quite frankly you're best off just leaving it off but what we will be doing is we'll be putting a band of tape to make all this as airtight as possible. On all air-cooled Volkswagen engines, try to avoid having holes where the uh, airflow would be lost, as it were. Right, okay. Right, that's this little piece of tinware where the dipstick goes through, fitted. We're going to be blanking off that little hole there because we haven't got a uh, cable coming up to operate the flat mechanism and all the rest of it. All right. Now I'm going to fit uh, the engine bearer, the crossbar, because now is quite a good time to do it. And then after that, we've got uh, the second part of the exhaust to connect. Same thing on the other side. Then eventually the centre box. Turbine. Outer skirts. And that will soon be it for the basic engine builder. Okay, here we go. So, now we have the front and rear sections of the heat exchanges attached. Leave this collar loose for the moment. Same thing on the other side, because you're going to have to be able to woggle all this around a bit in the tinware. Uh, engine bar is on. Make sure the arrow goes towards the front of the vehicle. Uh, what else? Exhaust all clamped up now with exhaust paste. An assembly paste and all the rest of it and so on. Same thing here. Carrying on round. Same story here. Leave this loose so we can woggle this about a bit. It's all in there. All ready to be finely nipped up. It's starting to look like a CT engine. Right, next thing to fit is the centre box for which we use two new gaskets which are going to be assembled with the gasket compound 
exhaust assembly paste there and there. The only problem is that with the kit, it gives you the kit. It gives you very very short bolts because it's assuming that the threads in here are going to be spot on. So I think we might have to cheat our way around that a bit. Okay. Right, so that's all the back end of the engine on. All the tinware in place. The turbine on. The alternator in. What we've got to do now is we're going to assemble the clutch. This is the old clutch. To be honest, it's worn out. I think that would account for the juddering and spinning. So, let's just go into the blazing sunshine. Here's another one from stock that I've just cleaned and degreased. And while I'm cleaning and degreasing, we're having a look in the engine bay. That's where I've cleaned it. That's how it was before. Seems a shame to put something bright and shiny into a dirty hole. We're also going to clean up that gearbox, bell housing and stuff around a bit. And put some oil and grease into the heater control wires and so on. Okay. Right, so here we are with the engine out to the workshop and ready to go into the vehicle. It's exactly the same as the engine removal procedure. Take the offside rear wheel off to give yourself more access. Roll it in from the right, square it all up. We lift it up on the crane. The uh, axle stand has been left in place under the gearbox. And uh, there we go. Right. Right, here we are under the engine. Engine's been fitted, went in without any great palaver. Um, just noting, I'm just starting to connect up, start the motor and all the rest of it, and the heater control cable is worn to a wafer. That's going to have to be changed at some stage. Um, question is often asked, where's the earth strap on the gearbox? There's the earth strap on the gearbox. Looks like Right, here we have the car roughly cleaned down. And the only two bits that we're going to have to tinker with, maybe, is this tiny air screw and this screw here. Okay, that's your rich idle and that's your air in there. Apart from that, apart from a good blow down with the compressed air, it should be alright. Now I'm going to show you the little problems we've got on the underside. The heater wires are fragile at the best of times and they've got to have this long bit of metal on there. And as you can see, it's worn right down to a wafer. And when we look on the other side, you'll see that in fact the wire is broken off. So I'm going to have to make a little extension and a gadget to so that the heater works. These wires will have to be changed. Otherwise, there'll be no more heating. Now we we're just having a quick look underneath. Now, I don't like the look of this. This is the little filter that goes under the tank. But look. That's petrol. I bet the tank's empty. So I'm going to have to change that. Well, this is pretty ropey, as you can see. It's cracked all over. This is the pipe. What amazed me was there's a new piece of pipe coming from the tank to the new filter, and nobody thought to change this. I mean, just look at it. It's just, it's finished. Look. It's cracked all over. Look, cracks all over the place. Anyway, that was blooming expensive. A threepence worth of tube has cost a tank full of fuel because the bloody petrol tank's empty. Anyway, never mind. There we are. Not the world's prettiest dipstick tube. I'm going to have to... Re yes, going to have to be repaired with gaffer tape. Can't weld that, it's too small. Right, here we are. Lovely sunny day. So... The engine's now in. Uh, when I fit the engine, I fit the engine into place as per the previous video 
the sequence that is to say it hasn't got the carburetor on it hasn't got the distributor on it hasn't got the coil on all the fragile bits and so on um, when you mount the in now let's have a look here is the air blocking if you like masking tape this is heavy duty duct tape run so it's warmed up and so on. Uh, same thing the other side. Blocked off the little hole there. Everything is ready. Um, when you are about to fit the engine it's a good idea to fit the rubber seal that goes all the way around. First. Because it's a bit of a struggle otherwise. Okay, so the engine installation is the exact re reverse of the uh, uh, of the engine removal procedure which is on the previous video, so I don't propose to show you that again. Um, anyway, uh, now this is the system that uses the electromechanical ignition system known as the Hall effect system so for example you can soon tell because the distributor has got um, uh, uh, the diaphragm on the outside and it's a, a double entry there's one at the front and one at the back right it's set up with a pic 34 carburetor which is a nice carb very sensitive and uh, I'm not going to show you the tuning on this because I'm afraid we haven't got time but um, I will be showing you how to tune this sort of setup of engine and a carburetor, um, a conventional SVDA distributor uh, engine in a later video.